my name is Mike Faber. I'm a SPRI evangelist, and I would like to welcome, welcome you to another uh, SpreeConf webinar. And this time, we are going to talk about creating awesome storefronts with SPRI and Vue Storefront. And by the way, a video recording of this meeting will be available on a SPRI blog. So in case you, you've missed it or you would like to review it once again, uh, you may do so. And uh, what we want to do is we want to help you build the e-commerce platform that you want in a time and cost efficient manner. And uh, we're hoping to achieve that goal by number one, demonstrating the latest free features and integrations. Number two, sharing uh, some uh, e-commerce insights. Uh, and number three, connecting the free community around the shared topics and goals. And we've got a great lineup of speakers. Uh, I am being accompanied by Filip Rakowski, CTO and co-founder of View Storefront, uh, Rafał Cymer, CTO of Upside, and Tom Niesgoda, tech lead at Spree. And uh, those gentlemen are all e-commerce experts and uh, uh, they can certainly share some e-commerce insights and know-how with you. And uh, we'll start uh, in a moment. Let me just say that the Spree ecosystem uh, is ripe for headless implementations and you can easily connect any storefront using Spree APIs. But uh, in this instance, we're, we'll talk about integrating View Storefront 2 with Spree Headless. And uh, this integration has been provided by Upside uh, and Rafa will talk about it in a moment. Uh, also, uh, Tom, uh, our Spree tech lead will uh, tell you a little bit more about that. But before we uh, get to that, I would like to hand it over to Philip, who is the CTO and co-founder of View Storefront to tell us what View Storefront is. And let me stop screen sharing and maybe I can uh, hand it over to Philip, Philip, if you can, uh, if you could join us and here we go. Hey, hey, Philip, good to, good to have you with us. Yeah, good to be here as well. Uh, okay, so let me share my screen and don't make it any longer. Okay. <clears throat> can I should ask, do you see my screen, but I see me, you see it? Yeah, we can so, see it. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, as I was introduced, my name is Philip. I'm a CTO and co-founder of View Storefront. Uh, personally, I've been coding since I was 13 years old, and most of this time it was e-commerce. Uh, and today I want to share with you a little bit information about the view from itself, but also tell you why, in my opinion, this is a perfect combination for e-commerce using both technologies, view and Spree. So before I will actually introduce view from itself, maybe I think it would be better to start with a problem that we are trying to solve that is emerging in the e-commerce space. And this problem is that building e-commerce frontends these days is a super complex thing, really. You have a lot of challenges and many of them, they are not even related to the frontend itself, even though they are needed for the frontend part. And what we are building is basically a set of tools, not a single tool, that is supporting you in this whole journey, the whole chain, of delivering the front end. So from the moment when you're evaluating your tech stack and orchestrating to the moment where you're designing this, to the very end where you have this deployed on the production environment and you need to analyze this and optimize. This is why you know you don't need a front end framework, but you need a full stack front end platform. And this is exactly what we are. So we are serving you with tools to solve all these problems that you could encounter while building storefront. And believe me, setting up all of this on your own and figuring out all of this on your own, it takes ages, it takes a lot of iterations, and we've seen it a lot of times. In the same way that you're not building your e-commerce platform from scratch and you're using Spree as a starting point for your custom e-commerce, the same way you need something that will be a great bullet plate and starting point for your front end. And this is exactly what we are. And we identified that in this whole chain of you know, delivering front-end applications, there are actually three stages. One of them is when you need to evaluate your technological stack. And then when we are using this MAH approach, headless approach, 
we need to orchestrate different data sources so we can query them together uh, also for the security reason, for the performance reasons. And for that, we have a Vsurfing Gateway. And Vsurfing Gateway is basically a tool that is allowing you to plug in different data sources. One of them could be Spree, another one could be a CMS, and it would go on and on and on. And then from the front end, which is the storefront, you can call all, the, all of those services the same way, and you can even combine all of those responses in a single request. This is great for, for performance, but it's also abstracting the way how you are calling all of those APIs. Moreover, you can also glue different responses. You can also enrich them, modify. And right now, in this middleware, we are providing a lot of out-of-the-box integrations with different payment providers, with different CMSs, uh, with different e-commerces, of course, including Spree. OK, so now we chose our perfect tech stack. Uh, it's time to build the front end itself. And this is actually where Vistafront shines the most. And this is where we are having, uh, we're adding the biggest value. And the first thing that we're giving is basically kind of like a white label ready to use e-commerce storefront, uh, which is Vstorefront 2. So imagine that you have to build your storefront and there's a lot of groundwork you have to make actually to start customizing or to start building features that are very specific to your business. And what we want to give you is basically a boiler play that has all of this groundwork already done. So it is connected to your e-commerce, it is connected to your CMS, it is connected to the payment provider, it's all the features that you would need, like you know, server-side rendering. Uh, it is allowing you to generate static pages. It is fast, scalable, uh, type-safe, based on Next.js. And what is most important, it is fully customizable. So you're taking that and focusing only on the things that are specific to your business. You're not wasting time on a very repetitive groundwork. In addition to that, this is not the whole problem, because another problem is that you have to develop the UI and you have to develop in a way that is easy to maintain, but you also have to develop in a way that is easy to work with, uh, with developers. I remember many, many situations when the biggest problem of delaying the project or of poor quality of the project was that it was very hard to cooperate between design and tech team. And this is exactly why we created the Storefront UI. So Storefront UI is basically a UI library of VGS components, but also a design system. And they fit perfectly together. So you're giving Storefront UI Figma files, which is an open source design tool to your designers. They have this groundwork, they have all the components, they have style guides, and they have pages, they're customizing it to any degree. There are really no limitations in, you know, to which degree you will customize that, what you will add, what you will remove. And then they're giving this to developers. Developers already have a great foundation that is based on those designs. So the only thing that they need to do is add some missing components and customize the ones that we have right now. But they don't need to take care of, again, low-level groundwork like accessibility, like making sure that all of this is performing well, and making sure that it all works without JavaScript. It is already there. You just need to customize your needs. And we have more than 50. Storefront UI components right now, and each of them is fully customizable. So you can customize both the style guide, you can customize also each individual component. You can modify the template, uh, you can modify the styling, uh, you can also just slightly customize it with props. And in addition to that, Storefront UI is already integrated with all the major content management systems. So again, this is a groundwork that you have to do. Because if you have a list of components and if you want to make them available in your uh, CMS, then you're creating schemas that are corresponding to those components. You're also making connections with a CMS. This is also something that you already have in this boilerplate that we're giving you with Vsurefront 2. So again, we are saving you a lot of time. All the static pages, some of the product pages, other footer, they're already driven by a CMS. And this is not all. I said that this is the part where we are providing the biggest value. This is the design and UI. This is the acceleration of the front end itself. But we also have two additional small libraries. One is called Vsurefront Cache, which is basically allowing 
uh, caching based on etax for uh, your pages in Next.js. So you're basically tagging each page, specifying what products you have there, specifying what categories you have there, specifying what content you have there. And every time you change something in the CMS or in the e-commerce, those pages in the cache, they're being invalidated. We also have Team Utilities, uh, which is a tool that is allowing to build multi-vendor or multi-brand setups. So imagine that you are having five brands and each of them is using some kind of a master template or master UI library. And for each brand, you're only having some slight differences between each other. So there's no point in having five repositories for that. There's no point in maintaining all of those five repositories if like 90% of the code that you have is shared. So we are basically giving you a tool that is allowing you to very easily manage that. So we have inheritance based on file system for those projects. And as you could imagine, this is super flexible. So if your project differs just slightly, it can be done with team utilities. If your projects differ a lot and you have only some common parts, this is also doable with team utilities. So on the high level, this is how the architecture looks like. On the very bottom, we have our uh, services. In the middle, we have visitor from gateway, which is orchestration layer. And at the very top, we have this unified front-end layer that is uh, utilizing storefront UI. Now we have built that. So we connected all of our services. We built the front-end. We customized the UI library. We customized the UI components. And now it's time to the production rollout. And we're also allowing this with VStorefront platform. And VStorefront platform is, well, we like to call this vertical for VStorefront, where you can actually host the storefront itself and nothing else, only the storefront. But we really want that to be much more. We want VStorefront platform to be the, the center of the whole VStorefront ecosystem, where you will have a marketplace where you will have a great tools to analyze your store from both from the business perspective, but also from the development perspective. So you could optimize it further, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And now I want to tell you a little bit about the qualities of your store from that, at least in my opinion, are making it standing out from the competition, but also are making it very appealing to developers because we are developers and we are building this from the very beginning as developers. So first of all, we are backend agnostic, but what does it mean? It means that VStorefront can work with everything. So no matter what CMS you're using, no matter what payment provider you're using, maybe you are using some technology, some e-commerce backends that you want to migrate in the future to Spree. So using, you know, using VStorefront at the first step of the migration is also a great idea, uh, but it, we are not stopping there. As I, as I said, we are delivering tools to support the whole chain of delivering front-end, but we are also not forcing you to use all of those tools. For example, you can use our gateway with a React storefront, or you can use storefront UI uh, actually without our gateway. And you can, I think the best thing about that is that it gives you full flexibility and you don't need to rewrite the whole front-end from scratch because this is what was the mo biggest problematic thing when you're using storefronts that are dedicated to some specific e-commerce platform like Spartacus for, that is based on Angular and it is for SAP Commerce or PWA Studio that is based, uh, <coughs> that, that is targeted for Magento. So with this storefront, actually whatever part of your technological stack you will change, you can still utilize the core of your storefront if you're building this with your storefront. Performance, this is pretty obvious right now. Everyone talked about performance and recently it also became a very important SEO factor. This is fascinating because I think three years from now, no one was talking about the performance and about the importance of performance, but thanks to Google that introduced progressive web apps that introduced Google Lighthouse. Now it is obvious to everyone what is the biggest, how big the impact of the performance is and that we just need to take care of that because it's not only optimizing uh, the user-centric metrics that are improving the, the user experience, but it's also affecting the SEO. So the, the bullet plate that we are providing, so we store from 2 and store from 2i, it already has all best, uh, 
practices regarding performance. You have CSS purging, you have modern and legacy mode, uh, you have tree shaking, you have route uh, code splitting for each route, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So everything that you would expect from a well-optimized application and everything that you could forget, it is already there. And you can still, again, focus only on the things that are specific to your business, that are specific uh, to your use cases. Uh, we also have front-end and server-side caching out of the box with Vue Storefront cache. If you're using Vue Storefront platform, this is an infrastructure that is optimized for Vue Storefront and is based on Google Cloud. So all that you could expect from a well-optimized application, it is there. Of course, open source. I think that's, that, that, that's one of the things that is common for Spree and Vue Storefront. That we are originating from the open source and both products are built of course by the core uh, by the core team uh, by the companies but they are also built by the community and this is really giving you a great validation on the market and this is really allowing you to fulfill a lot of use cases because you have a lot of people coming to you either contributing on raising some concerns they are coming from different backgrounds they are coming from different industries and open source is actually the way to build a product that is really answering the needs of the market and that is really fulfilling different use cases. And at the same time, we both have very engaging communities. So if you want to contribute to either of the projects, I hope you will have a lot of fun and I'm pretty sure you will learn a lot. Now, I want to highlight some things that are very common for both Spree and the storefront. Because to me, this is a perfect combination, but not only from the technological perspective, but generally, because both projects are headless. And we are kind of like evangelizing about this new trend in the market, which is headless commerce, because we just believe this is much better for the customer. This allowing you to have a much bigger flexibility and this is allowing you to scale faster. And as we know, in the era of digital transformation, the flexibility is one of the most important things. Both care a lot about developer experience, about developers. Both are open source. And what is most important, both are from Poland. So if you like the project, if you like the integration, or maybe you would like to become uh, a part of uh, the team that is managing this project, then join the repository, pick an issue, and welcome to the family. And if you don't, please at least leave us a star. And that's it from my side. Now uh, there will be Rafael Simaris uh, showing Vue Storefront's pre-integration in action. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. Thanks for uh, introducing us to uh, your product. And it looks really great. And I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of everyone in this pre-community. And thank you for doing an excellent job at uh, the, you know, delivering and developing and further improving Vue Storefront. As you've said, it probably saves us thousands of hours of uh, custom front-end work. So you know, it's really great to have it. So thanks. And I believe, Tom, uh, you're up next, right? Oh, pardon. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I just wanted to quickly jump in between the longer presentations to give, to give a few words about uh, how we worked with Upside Lab with an integration. Um, so hi, everyone. And uh, yeah, so uh, we have a few year relationship with the Vue Storefront team. Uh, we've worked on the last integration, which was for VSF1. And now uh, we managed to help a little bit with the newest integration from Upside Lab, which is a, one, which is a step up. Uh, and you, I'm pretty sure you will enjoy using it as well. Um, We've contributed contributed to the integration, and we will in the future. Uh, we did some small uh, improvements, like uh, with how images are handled in it, and um, we hope to continue doing that later. Uh, Upside Lab was kind to also contribute to Spring uh, and improve the APIs for payments, for example. So we'd like to thank them for that as well. And uh, what else I would like to do now is just show you how you can quickly set it up locally uh, with Spree running, and you can start developing a project locally. 
And later on, uh, once I'm done, we'll switch to Rafa, who will give you some more details about how to adjust the store to a, adjust the integration to a specific store. So let me just share my screen. And please note, everyone, that we are brave enough to do some live coding sessions. Uh, thanks, Tom, and uh, uh, really exciting. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so uh, first off, you can see a demo of the integration. Uh, it's uh, available at upsidelab.io. Uh, so you can see uh, how it works, how it looks like right now. And the integration is available publicly at uh, View Storefront's GitHub account. And so let's just quickly go through the README and set it up. So the first thing, apart from setting up uh, the integration, of course, we need to start Spree. And as I've said in our previous webinars, uh, the easiest way to do it is uh, just uh, by uh, cloning the Spree Starter project on uh, Spree's GitHub. Uh, I have it right here. And afterwards, uh, you can use Docker Compose to run all the necessary services that will communicate with Spree, along with Spree. So it will start the Spree HTTP server. It will start the Postgres database uh, uh, Redis for caching and a worker all at the same time. So it's very easy to start with it. And we may, and uh, it will start by default at port 4000. Uh, so there will be no collision by default with the running version of uh, view storefront. Uh, so what I'm just going to do for Spree is going to run Docker Compose up to start all the different services I mentioned. The repository has a readme that tells you exactly what you need to do. Uh, so uh, while it is easy, uh, you may want to, for example, add some sample data to, uh, to the local database. So it's easier for you to start working on uh, the VSF integration. So that's a separate command you will have to run, but really uh, it's it's generally very simple to do so. And so as you can see, the Spree server is up. Other services are also up, like the database and so on, uh, running at port 4000. And so now I'm going to switch to uh, cloning and starting the integration. So first off, I need to clone the repository locally. Afterwards, pretty standard stuff. So yarn install. This will take a minute to fetch all the NPM libraries. While it's doing that, let me just show you uh, how Spree looks running uh, using Spree Starter. We should later say see the same 
information displayed uh, using the VSF storefront. It may take a bit longer at the beginning because we just started Spring. But we're in. And you can see that it is filled with some example information. Uh, this is mostly just data from the sample that you can also include when you set up Spring Starter. And here are some products. So we'll be able to see those in a second in the VSF storefront. OK, so yarn install finished. We can move on to the next command. Uh, before running the server, we need to set where uh, Spree uh, is running. So that's going to be HTTP localhost 4000. And afterwards, we need to build the project and run it. Almost done. All right. So we're ready to start the storefront. We go to yarn dev, and in a second, we should be able to visit the website. So by default, it's running on port 3000. So let me visit that. By the way, uh, while we wait, feel free to ask any questions in the chat pane. If it's collapsed, you can expand it on the right hand side. Or if you don't like uh, you know, following the questions, you can collapse it to, to maximize the, 
uh, the window that Tom is sharing currently. Yes, we'll be answering your questions in the chat when you have a moment. Uh, I can't see it right now, but the website is loaded, so you can see uh, it's working using uh, local uh, storefront server and local spree servers. And if I go to, let's say, women, then I should see the products uh, from the sample database that we added to the spree starter. And here they are. You can't see pictures. I added a few, but uh, maybe difficult to find right now because the sample database doesn't contain them. Um, but they normally do, will appear. And so this is a, a way you can start working on your store if you want to use uh, view store. Uh, let me see. Let's change the sorting. All right, so here are some sample product images that I added. Adding to cards works, as you can see. Um, I can go to check out. I can go. I can do the uh, the stuff you would expect from a, a commerce storefront to do. And one thing to note uh, here is that some uh, features are available since Spree 4.3. Uh, so you may want to adjust this uh, middleware config JS file. Uh, to change what you want to use, depending on the version of Spree you're using. But other than that, uh, that's it. Uh, this is this was a quick intro to how you can set up uh, the VSF integration locally. And in a second, we'll switch over to Rafael, showing you some more details about how the integration works and how you can expand it. So that's it from me. Thanks. I hope you liked it. And let's uh, continue. Thanks, Tom. Uh, took you maybe five or maybe 10 minutes to set it up. So, you know, piece of cake. Uh, maybe even I could do it, you know, just copy paste some commands and it's uh, up and running, right? Yeah. It's very easy. Uh, very simple. I'm, I'm glad that both projects are, are just as simple to set up. So they don't uh, interfere with each other. Instead, in a few minutes, you can get them both up and running. All right. Excellent. Thanks so much, Tom. Over to you, Rafa. Thanks, Tom. Uh, it was great to see the whole setup process, and I'm very happy that it works so smoothly, where you pretty much need to copy paste instructions from the Rumi file. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Rafa Maris. I'm the CEO of Upside, and I'm one of the people responsible for uh, building integration. And let me just share my screen. Today, I will tell you a bit more about how to make use of uh, view storefront in combination with Spree, especially how to customize that uh, to build very nice, smooth storefront experiences based out of view storefront that connect to Spree, uh, and how to do that effectively using all of those view storefront goodies that uh, Philip was already mentioning. So uh, this is my plan for today, I will share with you an idea for a use case that some of you may find um, familiar uh, if you've ever dealt with subscription or, uh, you know, complex product uh, configurators. You may find some elements that you've probably struggled with, especially if you had to use jQuery and stuff like that. Um, then we'll also show you backend configuration, which is important in this in this particular matter because that's what our storefront will be connecting to. And then we'll get to the to the core of the presentation, where we'll implement a bit of the storefront from scratch using View Storefront and Storefront UI. Uh, that is meant to be a live coding session, but any of you who did that knows probably that this can very easily turn into a live debugging session. So uh, so we see about that. Uh, nevertheless, it's worth to know how to how to deal with problems that you uh, come up that can come up during development. So maybe I can also show you some of that, those, hopefully not. Uh, and finally, I will also share a bit about the roadmap for the view storefront and spree integration. And I will also 
point into some areas where if you're interested in contributing to open source, uh, you can pick up some issues from our uh, GitHub repository. So uh, not to uh, bore you with many slides, let's get our hands dirty and let's start implementing, uh, implementing something. So I will show you what we're going to implement. Uh, I believe, well, you probably uh, love pets uh, as majority of people. So what we came up with is a, let's say you have to implement a store that sells subscriptions for mystery boxes where you can get, for example, a monthly delivery of a box with some uh, random set of to of toys or outfits for your dogs or cats. And this differs slightly, well, those, those scenarios usually differ slightly from the like stock spree or view storefront layouts where you, know, you have a product, you pick a quantity, you pick some dimensions and you add them to cart because majority of them uh, require you to configure this subscription. So in our case, we'll have this uh, storefront for storefront product details page for uh, browsing the, the, subscription, the subscriptions available. And then we will also have like a simple configurator for your package. Uh, we'll try to implement that from scratch. Uh, based on my, uh, my trials, we may not be able to implement the whole model during this, uh, during this webinar because it will be too much time consuming and I want to keep that reasonable. Uh, but uh, I will also walk you through the implementation of this kind of configurator because that's fairly simple. It just takes too much time to code that from scratch. So that's like the visual part. Uh, and we obviously start here. Uh, and now I've been following Tom's instructions and I will show you my spree instance. So uh, yeah, that is my spree. As you can see, it doesn't have any front end. Uh, not much for us uh, to see here because it's running in the headless mode, uh, but we still have those nice APIs that were uh, added some time ago to Spree that enable this whole new um, set of ways of interacting with Spree because we can do pretty much anything with the storefront and in the upcoming version also in the admin panel by just interacting with the right APIs. So we have this API, uh, and we have some basic configuration here. Nothing fancy. We have two subscription products. One is for cats uh, that has some images here. I don't know why they don't show up on the product list page. Uh, and the other product is a mystery box for dogs. Uh, and to make it a bit more, bit more interesting, we also have some simple variants, like you can order a subscription of a small box or uh, if you want to get more every month, you can uh, subscribe to a large box. And of course they have some, uh, some like nice photos with them. Uh, and they are assigned to a very basic uh, category tree. So we have mostly like subscription ca subscriptions category. Uh, and that's, that's about it in our very basic uh, store. So moving to view storefront, which uh, we will need obviously to add here because we don't, this, this isn't working for us, uh, this kind of front end. Uh, what we can do in order to get started, like the, the easiest way as Tom was showing is just to clone the repository and get started from there. So I've already done that. I went through the yarn build process. I went through the yarn install processes that take a lot of time. Uh, so I can pr so I can just uh, run yarn dev, of course, providing my backend that's out there, uh, and it will connect to its APIs. So let's run that. Uh, the in the thing here is that running the yarn dev will take a bit because it obviously needs to compile uh, certain packages, put that together. Uh, you know the drill. So in the meantime, I will give you a brief walkthrough of what we have available in the repository. So if you look at the at the package, this is pretty much like the upstream branch. You will see that the repository contains three packages. First of them is API client, which is this module that Philip mentioned during his talk, where 
any calls to the API are proxied through. So this code doesn't run in the browser. It runs in an, a Node.js proxy, and it, it's pretty much responsible for uh, interacting with the API. And that's you know separated from the client runtime. Uh, so that's like one thing. Then on the higher level, what is um, what we'll be using a lot, especially if um, just to make use of what the storefront and the spree integration provide, is we have the composables package that provides reusable pieces of business logic that are using the view composition API, which is similar to React hooks. If any of you is familiar with that, this pretty much lets us create view variables, view computed variables, view methods um, that don't have to live in the component, but can be included in, into a component. So this lets us to get more flexibility. So for example, we have this use card um, composable that contains, that contains the logic for interacting with card, uh, managing tokens, uh, persisting the currently loaded card. What's also interesting is that some of those composables, they use shared references. So for example, if we have two places on a single site that use card, so for example, if you have this, um, this card icon at the top that shows the amount of products inside card, but then you also want to display some other card details in some other component, um, with this architecture, it will only fetch the card once, and you can just use this data across the across the uh, page. And then, of course, any changes made here will be reflected across the site as well. So as you can see, we have composables for majority of standard use cases, uh, and they are tuned in a way that they will interact smoothly with Spree and Spree's APIs and Spree's data model. So that's the second thing. And finally, and that's where we'll focus on a lot today, is the theme package, uh, which is a pretty much like a Next.js application uh, where we can define our uh, pages that will react to certain, and that will render responses to certain paths. Uh, we have a bunch of out-of-the-box components that we can customize, um, and that's, that's where we will do a lot of these visual and front-end focused customizations. And one thing that you will see after running the first build with Yarn is that there's this underscore theme uh, direct directory here. And what it gives you is, this follows the same uh, model as standard, like those Rails generated spree front-ends where there is a lot of built-in components and pages inside the storefront out of the box. Uh, so they will all end up in the uh, bundle uh, after the compilation. But if we want to customize anything, we just need to create a corresponding component or page uh, inside our like uh, main directory here. And this will override the like default behavior of the storefront and its default theme. Uh, and this is helpful if you want to uh, only override certain pages, but you don't want to rebuild the, let's say, login model or account pages from scratch uh, because that, that just doesn't make sense for you. So you can just focus on whatever you want to change here. So that is, that is pretty much the architecture. And I think the dev environment is up and running. Um, so I can show you this. Pull it up. Yep. So we have the view storefront connected to our backend, and it already shows our products here because it just fetched, uh, I think, a default category for for that. So it's about the time we can start customizing that uh, and implement those nice designs that we got from our designer. Um, but the first thing that you'll notice, and that may be a nice first change, is that those uh, buttons that you see here, they will direct to, well, nowhere, because we don't have those categories in our store. Uh, and those are like hard-coded in the default theme. So that's up for, up for us to change that. Uh, this isn't pulled anywhere from the backend. So let's make a change here. Uh, we can open up Vue.js DevTools. 
just to get started and get acquainted with the uh, with the uh, tooling. So I can locate the exact component responsible for that. And we can see that it's header navigation that that renders a list of categories. It has hard-coded inside its data. We can just go there and make a small update. You can see that the list is generated based on an array that we have in our code. So if we replace categories here with subscriptions and refresh the page, I think we'll get to a point where we'll have the correct link in the navbar. So that's our like first step, just to see if we're able to make changes efficiently. Yep, it works. And we're even able to get to the product page. Cool. Uh, next step, we may want to update the logo because we now have our own branding. So let's replace the stock one uh, with, with our own. So I actually have a logo.svg file, which is exactly the same name as the stock one. Uh, and that will that will update whatever is visible here. Now, as you can see, there is this storefront UI uh, used by the by the default team. Uh, and if you go to the docs, it's a very powerful toolkit that implements a lot of common e-commerce components. So. Um, this is a very nice booster for your productivity, just not to implement everything from scratch. You can just base your our application out of this. Of course, we're not tied to Storefront UI because this can be replaced uh, easily. Um, but uh, in, this, in this case, we'll just do some customization here. So the first thing we may want to do is we may want to change the color scheme because uh, it doesn't fit our brand right now. And for that, uh, we'll just customize the variables that Storefront UI uses internally. And the cool thing here is that Storefront UI uses CSS variables. So you don't need to rebuild the whole uh, SCSS bundle. You can just define your own variables at the like top level elements of the site, or uh, depending on where, you, where you'd like the theme to apply. And it will be picked up by the uh, by Storefront UI on its own. But so for that, we're going to make a change to the default layout, which encapsulates the whole uh, the whole page. So we will need to copy that from the built-in themes. As you can see, there's default dot view that is provided out of the box by View Storefront. So I'm just going to copy that to my working uh, to my working directory. Uh, and I can make any edits here. As you can see, the default layout has a top bar, has an app header, bottom navigation, card sidebar. So anything that majority of the stores need. Uh, so we'll stay with that. But I'm going to make a small change for the color theme. So for example, I can be body and storefront UI has a certain set of variables it uses. So let me just find the right color code for us, I think it's this one. And there's also primary variant color that's used by all the animations and you know nice effects that Storefront UI provides. So it's good to have that just for things to look nice. And then we also have we also add some rounding to buttons so that it's consistent across the site. And now this probably won't reload automatically because we made some changes in the like default layout. So just to be on the safe side, I will reload the dev environment. And after that, we should see those changes and like a major change in the look and feel of the site already. So this needs a few seconds. Uh, as you can see, it kicked off the next build process which internally uses uh, view storefronts extensions uh, for, for certain actions, but in general, that's a stock uh, like Nuxt installation, which means that if you have any Nuxt modules that you'd like to use, you can easily use them also with view storefronts. So um, there's a wide variety of uh, 
uh, the tools that it will provide to you, starting from uh, like GTAC or Google Analytics and ending with more uh, custom and you know uh, specific plugins. Okay, so the so the uh, dev environment reloaded with our new theme. As you can see, I just changed a few variables and well, the whole site now follows that. And if we go to a product page, you can see those nice bar, uh, rounded buttons. And I think this one is also following our fluffy design. Uh, but doing those small customizations is usually just a tiny piece of work. Uh, but in order to have a nice, sharp looking front end that's you know matching all the all the needs and that feels unique, uh, very often we just need to rebuild things from scratch, especially in the areas that are important to us. So for example, if we look at the product page, uh, this stock uh, product page that ships with view storefront and spree integration, that has a lot of components that we won't really need, uh, especially compared to our very simple and clean design. Uh, so let's let's just implement that from scratch. Uh, so we'll build this simple structure by just getting rid of the default uh, product page. And then I can also show you how to actually make use of View Storefront, how to pull data in from View Storefront uh, to your custom components or pages. So we have this product page in pages uh, where you can see the current structure. And let's just get rid of that. We can add our own template tag and then our own script. The explicit version, but I think that's the minimum that we will need uh, for this page. So now if we refresh, or this will actually reload automatically when once it detects changes, uh, we pretty much have the default layout and that's that's about it. So we're in a good place to start uh, the implementations. So I'm going to start with a uh, skeleton implementation of the whole structure that we will need to we will need for our uh, for our page. Uh, so let's start with a div that will be encapsulating everything. Then inside that, I will add another div for the product itself that will also be my base for you know all of. Uh, the BEM classes. And then looking at the designs, we have this um, like picture image gallery here. Uh, and this is usually a pain to implement from scratch because uh, majority of those components are um, very reliant on jQuery and you know it's hard to theme them. Uh, we've used, with Storefront UI, we can already make use of a gallery uh, that's compatible with the structures that uh, our composables will return. So I'll just put a placeholder here and I will come back to that in a second. Then we will also need some uh, name, the name of the product and some details. So there's another component in Storefront UI for displaying titles and you know making them look nice. Uh, then we will have what is called product characteristics, uh, which is this kind of structure where we have an icon, we have a uh, title and some subtitle here. Uh, and that's also a thing that Storefront UI uh, delivers to us. Careful not to make any typos here because that's a very uh, fancy name. Uh, I will add a class here because it will make it easier for us to think that later. And this one here is product characteristics. So we'll have three of those. And finally, we will have a button for uh, triggering the subscription uh, called subscribe. And in a few minutes, we'll make it a bit more interactive, but that's like our skeleton. So we have the we have the structure here, uh, and now we can st we need to actually import those components from Storefront UI in order to be able to use them. So 
we just do a, a named import from storefront UI. So we need gallery heading, characteristic, and button. And fortunately, that will uh, be enough in here. And then our page, of course, needs to also declare that it will use those. So uh, Vue.js can pick them up. And I as a button here as well. And I think we're so now if we refresh the page, yep, we can see this this button here. That's uh, the storefront UI implementation of a button. Uh, so now it's about the time to actually pull some product information here and push that to the front end. So in order to do that, we need to declare a new function inside our component. If you're used to the like classical Vue.js, you would probably define like computed uh, methods, et cetera, inside this, uh, this component definition here. Uh, but since we're using composition API, we need to integrate that for a setup function, which is a very new thing in Vue. And the setup function delivers props uh, it also delivers context that I will show you in a second. But this is pretty much the equivalent of this uh, inside view methods, view uh, computed methods, etc. cetera. Uh, so this way we can, uh, we can integrate that. So as a first step, we will need to know which product we're dealing with. So we will need to unwrap Slack from the, uh, the root. And as a next thing, we can pull, we will also import the use product composable that's delivered by uh, view store from Spree. That will provide us with some methods for pulling product information for the API uh, and for doing simple queries for products. So this, uh, this composable provides two methods. One is called search, the other one is called products. Um, and we just need to call this use product method, which is a factory method. Uh, it also takes this tag in here. Uh, this is helpful if you have multiple places on a page that query for different products, uh, because uh, this composable uses a shared state. And this way we can differentiate between uh, queries so that the data won't get mixed up. And finally, we can just return products. And this will make that available in the template here. So let's let's see. Uh, print out some debug information here. So I will print out products. And if I refresh the page, you can see that I'm getting an empty array, which is like the default uh, default state of the products uh, reference that we're getting from use product. So now the, the next thing that we would like to do is we'd like to actually trigger the query uh, to get some product information. So for that, I'm going to use an on SSR uh, callback that's delivered by Vue Storefront Core. Uh, and this will cause this, um, like whatever's inside this callback to be triggered on the server side. So even before the browser renders JavaScript, we will already have this data uh, populated. So I'm going to define a callback here, uh, and this will trigger the query. And now when we refresh the page, what we should see is we see this huge JSON that's returned by the use product composable uh, that has plenty of uh, information that we may want to show. Uh, what's interesting here is that we're returning all the variants that are, are available for a given product. So for in our case, for this mystery box for dogs, we will see two, one, 235, and then the next one, 236. Uh, the integration itself provides some nice methods for picking the right variant information. If you'd like to, for example, pick the master variant, or if you'd like to parse the query params, 
uh, of a stock view storefront uh, installation and get a relevant variant based on that. Uh, but in our case, that can be simpler. Like we'll just pick the first variant and display its details here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use view composition API to define a computed variable using this, this new syntax. Uh, so we'll call that product just to store the basic product information. And that's a computed variable that results to products value. We need to the reference uh, the wrapper here, we'll take the first item. And we can also provide that to our front end. Now, if we just display the product, we only get the first variant, which is more than we'd like to show here. Uh, so as the next thing, we can start working with this data and actually provide that to components across the page uh, fairly easily. So for your convenience, uh, the view storefronts pre-package also contains product getters, which is a bunch of getter functions designed especially for the product entity that will let you extract information from this product. But it will also take care of situations where, for example, the product is not yet present because, for example, there's some async hook uh, where the information may not be available and the product itself may be null. Or it does some transformations to make the data compatible with certain stock components. So I imported product getters here and I will just make it available to, to our uh, template here. So what's happening next is I can provide the SF gallery with some uh, images. So I will call product getters, get gallery, if I remember correctly, uh, of product. And that will give us the, uh, the gallery of photos for this particular, uh, for this particular product. I may need to refresh for the, uh, for the gallery to work properly, uh, but we got like our first step here. Uh, we can also play around a bit. So SF Gallery provides some nice uh, configuration options. For example, if you'd like to be able to zoom in, uh, you can just enable zoom and it will work out of the box, uh, giving you this uh, more detailed view here. So let's move forward. We also have an SF heading uh, need a title. So once again, we can just use product getters, get product's name. Uh, we'll also provide some description. I don't think I have that in my product, but I can just copy paste that from my uh, design for the sake of this demo. Uh, I can also configure the level of the header. And by default, the heading will be uh, centered. In our case, we can also use some help, helper classes of storefront UI to tie that to the left. And once we refresh, we have our product description here uh, already available. It will need some styling, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, next thing, we have those SF characteristics. So let's just add some, some data here as well. I will just take one of those, not to spend too much time doing copy pasting. Uh, so I just copy the descriptions here. The first one will have an icon of a uh, heart. And then we'll have two more. Uh, so we'll go with clock and with account that I think will be very, very nice and corres corresponding to the designs. So we have this. Uh, this part of the page already uh, implemented. And now, uh, like we have the basic layout for the for the product page. Uh, I will add some scripts. Uh, I won't be wasting too much of your time trying to live code some CSS, where majority of that is done through by changing uh, margins. Uh, like, you know, if you want to make things look nice, uh, usually it's a matter of adding some white space. So I just copy some of the styles. As you can see, there's a simple grid layout that, um, that covers majority of the page. And then 
pretty much like margins. As you can see here, we can also customize certain Starfront UI components uh, just to make them look nice in our particular case. But that should bring us to this kind of layout. So, uh, so we have that already. And the next thing we can do is we can implement a skeleton of a basic model that will be triggered by this subscribe now button. Uh, we won't probably implement the whole logic of the of the model, but I will also show you how uh, how this can be done. But let's start. Uh, so we have the we have the skeleton of the page, and we're going to add like one more component that we'll implement in a second called subscription model, uh, where we'll pass some details like whether the model should be visible, and where we'll provide a list of variants um, because as you can see here, this is pretty much where we'll allow the user to choose from one of th those variants we have defined before. So that's where we need the whole selection. Uh, and finally, the subscription model will most likely provide some callback uh, when it's closed, uh, where it should be closed. So we will also need to reflect that in our state. So any callback for that. And then for the button itself, it would be great if it also triggered some action opposite of closing the model. So we'll define click as on model open. Let's call it like that. And now we need to implement this simple toggle here. Uh, so just like with this computer thing uh, that I've showed you before, we also have another thing that uh, view composition API provides to us, which is a rep, which allows us to create a like data reference that's reactive. So if there are any changes to this value, uh, it will trigger uh, relevant updates in the uh, in the in the uh, HTML markup. So let's create a reference for model open that we will need later. By default, it will be false. Uh, simple as that. And then we will need two actions on model open, which is a callback uh, that will handle the button click. So is model open value true and then the opposite action on model close is model close is model open value false and the only thing we have to do right now is to also pass that further to the uh, to the template by returning that in this method so that's it I won't see any errors except one very important that says that our subscription subscription model component is not implemented. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so to do that, I will just create a separate component called subscription model code view. Some basic template and a script as well. The name, of course, it will need to define apps, like for example, whether the model should be visible. Um, so that's a Boolean property. And we will have another for variants, variants type array, and it's also required. And I think that's the pretty much the simplest version of the component that we can think of. Let's just uh, Paste some dummy text here just to see if that works. And we will import this component into our page. And if I haven't made any typos, that should uh, show some text. Yep. So we have the component imported and now we can uh, make it slightly more interactive. So for that, uh, 
if you've ever if you ever had to implement models, you know that it's fairly tricky to position that properly. You have to deal with those backdrops, uh, the user clicking outside of the of the model that we probably need to close it. But fortunately, once again, we can reuse the uh, storefront UI model and use that for our needs. So uh, I will just make use of it here. Um, I will bind that to a, a computed property that I will implement in a second. And I will add some, some basic text, like just your package. And now, once again, all we have to do is we need to import the model. Uh, we need to provide that to our, uh, our component. And we will also implement a simple computed property that will be based on the prop here. So we have props, we have context, and we can define is visible that's um computed and that's pretty much props visible you return that and of course need to import from view composition api should be it we may also want to and the closing of the model, which is very simple because we just need to pass this event further. And let's see where it brings us. So we have the we have our product page. We have the subscribe now button that opens our model where we can finalize the uh, subscription process. And because we have limited time today, uh, I won't be spending too much time implementing the model from scratch, but I believe I have a working implementation of that uh, that I can show you and I can walk you through very quickly because it's nothing complicated. Uh, it's just a lot of uh, code for managing the whole thing. Let me just replace that with a working implementation, like full implementation, and we should see, we should see the UI here. Yep. So we have a model where you can choose the uh, variant, which as you can see also changes the base price. And for the sake of our particular needs, we would like the customer to be able to provide how big their dog is so we can deliver the correct, um, like for example, if we're delivering outfits for the dog, like this one in here, we can at least assume uh, which size we could, we could send them. This can of course, uh, be implemented in many other ways. And as you can see, this slider will also impact uh, the total price. And we should even have the subscribe button working, which puts the subscription in a customer's cart. So now that's that's the use case. And let me just show you how this works. Uh, so we have our model. We do have some layout elements, like for example, uh, a heading. Uh, with some like callout, and then we're using the SF card component, which is a very nice implementation that allows us to uh, have this kind of this kind of layout with a photo, some title, subtitle, and then an action button, uh, and we render a card for each variant that is available. Uh, there's a click callback that changes current state for the selected variant and some other like uh, styles and uh, and texts. Then we also have the second section for choosing the weight of the dog. And once again, we have a header, we have a heading, and we have a range picker, which uh, is responsible for this nice slider uh, that allows us to easily choose the weight of the dog. And it also has some callback that updates the current state of the component. And finally, we have a price summary uh, that displays the price that was computed. I will show you in a sec how, how that, that is done. And we have our sub subscribe button that finalizes the process of adding to cart. So now the, the interesting part here is that we use the use cart composable, which lets us 
interact with a card. In this particular case, it lets us change. I mean, it lets us add products to a card. Uh, we also have use UI state composable, which is later used for triggering this card sidebar. So we can uh, have control over what's, what's visible from those uh, stock and shared UI state components. The props haven't changed here, but uh, we have some more state. So we have a reference for the selected option ID. We also have a reference for the weight of the doc. Mm, as you can see, we're using the add item method of use card uh, for triggering this uh, next step of the subscription. And we're using toggle card sidebar that's provided by a use UI state. Uh, further, we have some computed methods that let us uh, easily pick the variant that's been chosen. Uh, we have some custom getters that we've defined and that we can use for pulling variant details more easily than unwrapping that uh, manually in every place. And then we have some callbacks, like when the when the option is selected, it changes the state, which, which triggers uh, all sorts of updates on the front end. Uh, we have a callback for selected weight, which does pretty much the same. Uh, and then we have this subscribe callback that, as you can see, adds an item to a cart. Easy as that. It just calls add item on this use cart composable and provides the uh, select the currently selected variant. The rest is handled by composables and by our API client. It also closes the model because we don't need that anymore. And to show the customer that something happened, we will also uh, show the card sidebar. And regarding computing the price, which is totally dynamic here, uh, as you can see, it changes when you move this slider, but also when you choose the option here, uh, we just have a single place inside our code that's responsible for computing that. So we have a computed property here uh, that does some simple math, like it takes the base price of the selected variant and then adds some markup based on the size of the dog. And finally, we have some uh, standard config of a range picker, nothing fancy here. And that's it. Uh, so that's how you can very easily get started with Vue Storefront, how you can connect that to Spree and how you can implement uh, a nice uh, custom Storefront experience without having to, to deal too much in Ajax calls in managing the state because majority of that is already there. Of course, everything is fully customizable so uh, you can do anything you'd like there. Uh, and I guess that brings us to the end of the live coding session. Um, so I hope this this will be helpful for you if you'd like to try out your storefront or if you'd like to implement something from scratch, uh, more complex uh, experiences that require this smooth UI and uh, this SPA-like uh, feeling. Um, so to finish, I would like also like to share with you some details regarding what's happening in the open source right now. So recently we had a Spree 4.3 release um, that brought some new features, especially I think right now it supports the storefront API like fully. You can do anything uh, you could do via the uh, standard front end via the API right now. Uh, and where the integration is compatible with that. What we're working on right now is adding multi-currency support, uh, which is like the next milestone just to have that already baked in uh, right now it would require a bit of uh, a bit of changes in the api client and composables if you'd like to do that uh, and what's on our roadmap as well is integrating with the changes that are coming to spree 4.4 which is for example wish lists that will be out of the box in spree or things like reviews and you can see the full list of issues and uh, you're more than welcome to contribute. So I'm looking forward to getting PRs with either small improvements or, or like bigger, bigger features. Uh, you can see the full list of issues in the repository. So, uh, well, happy hacking. And if you're, if you're interested in contributing, uh, I will be more than glad to, to include your contributions here. 
And that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much. I hope this has been helpful and I'm looking forward to hearing your questions. Thanks, Rafa. As you can see, uh, Rafa's team uh, at Upside is uh, not only has not only produced the integration with Sphere, but they are also experts at customizing the view storefront experience to your needs. And by the way, I love mystery boxes for dogs. So that's an excellent business idea. You know, if you could, uh, you know, if you could uh, make it go live somehow, I would definitely. Maybe we should do that ourselves, right? Uh... Yeah, exactly, exactly. Or uh, you know, for uh, toddlers, for babies, I would. I would also be a lawyer cu customer. So, uh, really great ideas there. Um, all right, uh, time for some questions. We've been asking questions in the chat window in the chat pane, on the right hand side but if you've got any for rafael uh, then uh, we would very much appreciate it the recording of this meeting will be available on youtube and the street blog so you know your questions could help other people uh, if you have any questions for rafael at this time please do share them and uh yeah yeah uh if you don't feel free to drop uh, rafa an upside uh, a line uh, regarding any customization needs and the uh, you know and the requirements that you might have for uh, view storefront and spree integration and uh let's just give it one more uh yeah uh, future plans to integrate platform api yeah, um, I think platform API is mostly directed at um, at the admin panel, right? So that's not what the storefront is for. Yeah. Uh, I guess, Mike, if you guys have any plans for the for the admin panel, I guess that would be a uh, a question for you here. Uh, but we're not planning to yeah. use that directly in the storefront. Yeah. All right. And the support for a multi-vendor platform uh, use case. So that's not something out of the box, but multi-vendor um, is usually about, you know, adding some details to products that let the customer, uh, that give them information about um, who the product is coming from or adding more advanced filtering. Uh, so we don't have that out of the box, but it's fairly easy to implement based on what we have already. Uh, and that also depends on how you'd like to support this multi-vendor. Uh, one of the things that we've been working on, uh, it is already implemented, but there's also an issue on GitHub for uh, improving that slightly is support for multiple shipments uh, for a single order. Uh, so, and I guess that's that's one of the cases that uh, show up quite often in like multi-vendor. If you're ordering products from multiple vendors, Sometimes this results in multiple shipments with different shipping costs. Uh, so we do have support for that. Uh, and we're now working to improve that to fully fit the new view storefront APIs because they also add some, uh, some nice things regarding the shipping uh, during the checkout. All right. Another question from uh, Lawrence. Uh, so that's a question about the Spring Admin URL. Uh, that's, a, I think, a strictly spree question. So if you could uh, go ahead and ask uh, this question in the spree Slack channels, at uh, slack.spreecommerce.org, uh, we would uh, probably be able to answer that question in detail there. And another question from Felipe. Uh, are there view storefront integrations today running production in production already, or is it still beta? Uh, that's yeah, we, for we, you, we have uh, some integrations that are running in production and um, that's where we also got a lot of experience in, you know, how to how to properly integrate with Spree, especially that the API is a fairly fresh thing that's also changing. Uh, I think on Spree side, there's even like one example of an integration. I can also share that with you via ADM. Uh, so if you'd like to if you'd like to see that, just ping me on Spree Slack. Uh, 
I have one that's like super nice, but I'm not allowed to share the publicly due to some NDAs, but I can walk you through that. Yeah, and as Philip has mentioned, uh, well, view storefront is production ready and uh, view storefront integration uh, is also used in production. Uh, so it's definitely good to go. Uh, any more questions, guys? Uh, feel free to ask any questions and uh, you're not only answering them for yourself, but also for other people who would watch the video afterwards. So uh, maybe let's just give it one more minute. And by the way, uh, Rafa, thanks so much again for delivering this integration. We've been collaborating on that with the View Storefront team, with uh, uh, the Spree team. It's been a team effort, but uh, Upside has been leading it uh, from the beginning. So I would like to, uh, you know, make it an appreciation minute for uh, for Upside and for your team. Uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, if uh, any of the participants of this webinar or anybody watching the video afterwards would like to customize uh, View Storefront, integrated with with Spree, feel free to contact Upside, uh, who are a valued Spree partner and a View Storefront partner. Uh, so yeah, they are the experts to talk to. Another question, what are Thank the you, Mike. requirements It's been an exciting journey building that together with you guys and with View Storefront. And I hope we can engage even more people in the community. Uh, it's kind of like a joint effort, right? Because uh, as you can, as you yeah. could see, that speeds up the process a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in open source, uh, you need to collaborate with people, and we've been successfully doing it for uh, for weeks now. Uh, another uh, uh, question from How Haukur. So, what are the minimum requirements for running your storefront uh, on a pass like a Rock or Red? Uh, is there a minimum config in your experience? Uh, so for running view storefront in Heroku, uh, you can deploy that to a uh, to a simple small dyno. Uh, it's not that heavy on its own. Uh, the only lengthy process that you will come across is like the initial build of the of the whole package. So once you're doing a deployment, be prepared that you will have to wait for like a minute or two for, for just during the build phase um, because that's quite heavy. It needs to bundle a lot of JS packages. But once that's done, um, the view storefront pretty much serves the like pre-compiled script. It does a bit of server-side rendering, uh, and of course, you can scale that depending on your needs. But just to get started, uh, you need one dyno for that. Uh, also, an interesting thing if you follow uh, if you follow view storefront readme, as you as you could see, there are like three packages, right? There's API client. Uh, that's behind that's behind a node proxy and then there's composables and team that run on the um that deliver the front end so if you have certain scalability needs you can also deploy the api client and its node proxy independently so that can run on a separate server uh, if that helps you scale you know if you are doing some heavy queries there or heavy data processing so it's also quite quite flexible there Excellent. Um, All righty then. Uh, if there are no more questions at this time, uh, feel free to either uh, uh, join the Spree Slack at slack.spreecommerce.org or uh, you know, drop us an email uh, either uh, through the Spree website or uh, uh, Upside website and we'll be happy to help you along with your uh, e-commerce development. Uh, and your project. Uh, and uh, that, I believe, wraps it up. Rafa, thanks so much. Uh, Philip, uh, Tom, thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you for participating in this uh, SpreeConf webinar. Thank you, everyone, for uh, who contributed to organizing it. Uh, Anya, Eva, uh, thanks so much. And uh, I wish you a good day and a nice evening and uh, talk to you soon.